Hello. So, um, the vlog was just my eldest daughter had a uh, three hour circus class in a suburb very, very far away from home. So I thought, may as well just hang around with my younger daughter and check out all of the local shops and have a browse, have a little browse. Um, I didn't buy anything for myself from the bookstore besides, where is it? Here it is. There's this candle. It's, that's what the inside of it looks like. A sunflower candle where you can plant it afterwards and sunflower grows. Um, because I don't, I don't buy books unless it's a book that I really, really, really love. Otherwise, I just get them from the library. So I thought I'd go through my massive TBR list since they're all library books. Um, these are the books I'm definitely going to read within the next month because I have to return them. So first up, we got Making Light Work by David A. Spencer. Is work a primordial course, primordial curse, <laughs> or a spiritual calling? Or is it a tedious necessity that technology will abolish, freeing us to indulge lives of leisure? In this book, David Spencer argues that work is only an alienating burden because of the nature of work under capitalism. He makes the case not for the abolition of work, which can remain a source of meaning and dignity, but for its lightening. So that's making light work. And then we've got a system so magnificent, it is blinding by Amanda Svensson, translated by Nicola Smalley. And it says, are we free to create our own destinies or are we just part of a system beyond our control? A joyful family saga about free will, forgiveness and how we are all interconnected. So that's that one. Next up, we've got an exciting and vivid inner life stories by Paul and Della Rosa. Whether working in food service or in high-end retail lit by a laptop in a sex chat or by the camera of an acclaimed film director, sharing a dangerous apartment in the city, a rooming house in China or a vacation rental in Mallorca, the protagonists of the 10 stories comprising Paul De La Rosa's debut collection of exciting and vivid in life navigate the spaces between aspiration and illusion, ambition and aimlessness, the curated profile and the unreliable body. So that's that one. Hey Sylvie, you want to come say hello? You want to come say hello? Sylvie, say hello. No, no, she doesn't like it. She doesn't like being manhandled. All right, so. None of us do. Okay, The Instant by Amy Liptrot. Is this one? Okay, I've got just superlatives at the back. Wishing to leave behind the quiet isolation of her Orkney Island life, Amy Liptrot books a one-way flight to Berlin. Searching for new experiences, inspiration and love, she rents a loft bed in a shared flat and looks for work. She explores the streets, nightclubs and parks and seeks out the city's wildlife. Go shorts, raccoons and hooded crows. She looks for love through the screen of her laptop. So that's that one. Oh my little baby. Oh my little baby. Oh my little baby. I missed you. You were gone for so long. I normally never ever leave my cats. Okay, so next up we've got Good Night, Vivian. Good night by Stephen Carroll. London, June 1940. Vivian Haywood, the mercurial wife of celebrated poet T. S. Eliot, is about to effect a daring escape from Northumberland House, the private asylum where she has been held for the past three years. There's an old law, Vivian has been told, that if you can break out of an asylum and stay free for 30 days, they can't make you go back. But closing in on Vivian is a young detective sergeant, Stephen Minter, a man with a hidden past of his own who has orders to track her down. We've got that one. We've also got Reasons to Go Outside by Esme King. Pearl Minter hasn't been outside in 43 years. Since she arrived on Dartmoor as a girl, an isolated family cottage has been her whole world, a place of safety. But now 59 year old Pearl is utterly alone, except for the postman, the local crows and her memories of the summer of 1976. So that's that one. Then we've got, I've got oh, Law Olympus number two. I have to read number one first. So this is a um, graphic novel. <laughs> number two came in before number one. I'm just going to have to hold on to it. So that's uh, Law Olympus, which is about, I think it's Persephone and Hades, but I've got to wait for the first one. So that'll be at the end of my list. Then we've got The Mysterious Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. A prim and proper lady thief must save her aunt from a crazed pirate and his dangerously charming henchmen in this fantastical historical romance. Excited for that one. And then we've got Cats in Spring Rain, a celebration of feline charm and Japanese art and haiku. Slip this small volume in your pocket as you head out to greet the neighbourhood cats or keep it by your bedside for moments of quiet, joyful contemplation. And it looks like this inside. 
And then we've got Change Your Life, Awaken Your Potential and Live Your Dreams by Zoe Bosco. How do we regain our equilibrium when everything feels out of whack? Based on the inspirational wisdom of kinesiology, Change Your Life is a guide to restoring balance to your physical, emotional and mental systems. There's that one. We have the Department of Rare Books and Special Collections by Eva Jurisizic. I don't know how to pronounce that. God, Lord, I butchered it. What holds more secrets in the library, the ancient books shelved in the stacks, or the people who preserve them? Liesl Weiss long ago learned to be content working behind the scenes in the distinguished rare books department of a large university, quietly managing details to make the head of the department look good. But when her boss has a stroke and she's left to run things, she discovers that the library's most prized manuscript is missing. And then we've got The Art of Solitude by Stephen Batchelor. When world-renowned Buddhist writer Stephen Batchelor turned 60, he took a sabbatical from his teaching and turned his attention to solitude, a practice integral to the meditative traditions he has long studied and taught. This beautiful literary collage documents his multifaceted explorations. In a hyper-connected world that is simultaneously plagued by social isolation, he reminds us how to enjoy the inescapable solitude that is in, at the heart of human life. So that's that one. Sorry, I think my hair's been trash, but trash it shall be. Um, radically content, being satisfied in an endless dis endlessly dissatisfied world by Jamie Veron. Opt out of societal expectations and create a life you never have to escape from. Too many of us are waiting for our lives to begin, putting our happiness on layaway from some future version where it all lines up, when we've accomplished it all, when we have the perfect career, bodies, partners, when our lives finally feel good enough. But what is good enough? Who gets to decide and when do we ever reach it? over so we've got stealing infinity so this is one of the ones i got from the book box my life goes completely sideways the moment i meet the mysterious braxton sure he's ridiculously hot but he's also the reason i've been kicked out of school and recruited into gray wolf academy a remote island school completely off the grid i never should have trusted a face so perfect oh this is why isn't it and in school Ugh, i can tell oh, but i'm gonna read it because Pretty much bought it, didn't I, in the book box. I'm just going to move all the last books over here. Yeah. So organised, guys. Look at me go. All right. Okay. So we've got How We Are a Novel. Jessica Gaetan Johannesson. This is translated. How We Are Translated. Sorry. It's a bit weird the way it breaks up. I'll put it down here so it doesn't glare. People say, I'm sorry, all the time, when it can mean both, I'm sorry I hurt you, and I'm sorry someone else did something I have nothing to do with. It's like the English language gave up on trying to find a word for sympathy, which also wasn't the word for guilt. Sorry, no, that's interesting. I'll put it down here. And then we've got The Secret World of Connie Starr by Robbie Neal. Connie Starr was always a difficult child. Her mother knew as soon as Connie entered the world that day in Ballarat in 1934 and opened her lungs to scream. There was more chaos in the world than before and it wouldn't leave until Connie did. But if Connie is difficult, she's also different. From the safety of a branch high in her lemon tree where she speaks to angels, she sees the world for what it is, a swirling mass of beauty and darkness, of trauma and family, of love and war, of truth and lies. Lies that just might undo her and drive her to a desperate act. It's not reading the whole blurbs because the blurbs are massive. We've got Mortal Remains by Mary Ann Fraser. Morticia, ghoul girl, freak. Lily McRae has heard it all. Despite what the bullies say, she loves her job at her family's funeral home. Lately, though, her friends are drifting away and her father is pushing her into taking over the family business, so she feels lonelier than ever. She finds herself spending all her time talking to her clients. After all, the dead are the only ones who can really listen. But things get complicated when she reconnects with Adam, a boy everyone thought was dead. We've got The Lovers by Paolo Cognetti. The remote alpine village of Fontana Freda lives by the seasons. These quiet and complex rhythms appeal to Fausto, who's left the city of Milan behind, and with it, his relationship. He takes a job as chef in a little restaurant and entrusts himself to new beginnings. Sylvia is also seeking change. Her sights are on the glaciers where she is read, climbed a thousand metres towards the sky, is equivalent to travelling ten times the same distance to the north. She's in search of her personal North Pole. Hey, Sylvie. We've got um, Mischief Axe by Zoe Gilbert. It's a cute cover. Oh, I've got to leave it inside. Hearn, the hunter, mischief maker, spirit of the forest, leader of the wild hunt, hurtles through the centuries pursued by his creator. A shapeshifter, Hearn dons many guises as he slips and ripples through time. 
at Lantern Lit 12th Night Theatrics at Spectacular Burning of the Crystal Palace at an acid lace 60s party. Wherever he goes, transgression, debauch and enchantment I'll always follow in his wake. That's that one. Then we've got A History of Wild Places by Shea Earnshaw. Once again, I'm going to open up the cover. Travis Wren has an unusual talent for locating missing people. Hired by families as a last resort, he requires only a single object to find the person who has vanished. When he takes up the case of Maggie St. James, a well-known author of dark, macabre children's books, he's led to a place many believe to be only a legend. That's that one. And then we've got The Shaman's Book of Living and Dying by Alberto Villoldo. One of the pioneers in energy healing and shamanism recounts 12 miraculous stories in which, through the use of shamanic energetic techniques, people experience extraordinary physical and emotional healings. Meet a dancer who could barely walk until a series of sessions, a businesswoman who is free from headaches and discovers the benefits of an integrated interior life, and a young woman who confronts her past and recovers from crippling depression. And then I've got The Ballad of Delirious Graves by Alex Jones. So just, that's better. Um, put on your dancing shoes and step into New Orleans as you've never seen it before in this vibrant and imaginative debut. Nola is a city of wonders, an alternate New Orleans made of music and magic where spirits dance the night away and wise women help keep the order. To those from away, Nola might seem strange. To failed magician Perilous Graves, it's simply home. Then the rhythm of the city stutters. Nine songs of power have escaped from the magical piano that maintains the city's beat and without them Nola will fail. And willing to watch his home be destroyed, Perry will sacrifice everything to save it. But a storm is brewing and even if they did capture the songs, Nola's time might be coming to an end. So those are all the books that I'm planning on reading in the next few weeks. Hopefully I get through them before I have to return them. Um, and yeah, I hope you're having a splendiferous, fantastic, stupendous, magnificent morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. And as always, stay wild, star child.